We're not averse to putting in loads of effort for a really worthwhile result. How else do you think we turn out a video like this every single week? Hey, who let those crickets in here? On the other hand, we're dead against working our socks off for an insultingly shabby reward, as in the case of these unlockable video game characters who were so much more hassle than they were worth. Join us now in bemoaning the unlockable characters that were not even nearly worth the effort it took to unlock them. Uh, beware one spoiler ahead, but it's for like urban rain, so you know what, don't even worry about it. Round one, fight! <laughs> <laughs> Before the much-needed Mortal Kombat reboot in 2011, it's possible to pinpoint the exact moment the series ran out of ideas. Surprisingly, it wasn't when they created a character who was just a cop with a gun, or when they made one whose name was just the lead designer's surnames, but backwards. Oh! <laughs> it wasn't even when they introduced a purple ninja called Rain, whose only purpose was to be a joke about the song by Prince. Purple Rain. This is what it looks like when mics cry. Yes, with rain they could definitely see the bottom of the barrel, they just hadn't broken through it and started tunnelling to the Earth's core yet. That moment occurred in Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance for the PS2, with an unlockable character called Mocap. <laughs> Mocap with a K, obviously. Mocap was, as the name suggests, a motion capture artist wearing one of those funny suits with all the ping pong balls attached. You could unlock him by spending combat coins. Coins with a K, obviously. Mocap was specifically based on this guy, Carlos Pacino, who played Raiden in previous games. They even wrote an earnest, in-universe backstory to explain his appearance in Deadly Alliance. One that suggests that the game you're playing is based on a Johnny Cage movie, based on real events. What they didn't bother doing is giving the guy a fatality, which probably puts him at a bit of a disadvantage in the Mortal Kombat tournament. Finish him. Well, that and the fact that he isn't a supernatural ninja, a god in human form, or a giant centaur. That probably helps too. Pikachu is already one of the least intimidating characters in Super Smash Bros. Melee, on account of him being an adorable anime mouse whose heart knows only love. Pikachu! Pikachu! Yeah! But Pikachu is a veritable Brock Lesnar when compared to his unlockable pre-evolved form, Pichu, who is essentially a baby Pikachu, with all the raw physical strength and combat prowess that that implies. Pichu has terrible range on account of his arms being about three inches long, gets stunned easily because he weighs practically nothing, and somehow manages to take recoil damage from his own electrical attacks, which, when pretty much all his good moves are electrical attacks, is something of a drawback. <laughs> Pichu mercifully isn't available from the outset. To play as him, you have to either play a special event or play 200 versus rounds, at which point you'll have to fight Pichu to unlock him. Don't worry, it won't take long. <laughs> and after all that effort, Pichu is finally yours to play as. Please enjoy, if you can, after learning that many pro Smash players consider him the worst character in the game. And this is the game that features Mr. Game & Watch. That guy doesn't even have three dimensions. You hear that, Pichu? You suck. Pichu, please try and pay attention. You just missed my sick roasting. Bayonetta is already a pretty difficult game if the number of thrown controllers when we're playing is anything to go by. Uh. Chapter 6. Chapter 6. So imagine how much more fun you could be having if you were playing as a character who was reduced to one hit point by every single attack in the game, regardless of how weak it was. 
Well, that's the situation you find yourself in if you play Bayonetta as unlockable character Zero, King of Little Devils, a demon who looks like Santa's skeleton trying to fight its way out of a garbage bag. <laughs> Little King Zero is unlocked by completing Bayonetta's lost chapter, Angel Slayer, in which you have to clear 51 fights, culminating in a battle against Bayonetta herself that is harder than an astrophysics exam etched onto diamonds. Failing that, you can also purchase Zero from the cheat phone in Chapter 2 for the low, low price of 5 million halos. And I mean, who wouldn't want to spend that many precious halos on a deeply unsettling character who uses all of Bayonetta's animations and voice lines and dies in two hits in a notoriously difficult game? <laughs> Me is who? Thought that was obvious from all the sarcasm. Zero is so oddly shaped that he sometimes doesn't even appear in cutscenes as the camera is set up for the much taller Bayonetta, so I hope you enjoy watching vague shapes bob in and out of shot. Above all else though, I really need to stress just how much you don't want to play Bayonetta with a character who can't take more than two hits without dying. If not for your sake, then for the sake of your controllers. Yeah! Ow! Okay, that hurt! My name is Brad Hawk. I'm a professional. I do things my way. I answer to no one. 1999 PS2 beat em up Urban Rain was as forgettable as it was released in 1999 for the PS2. Starring Commander Shepard in a snakeskin jacket years before he signed up to the Systems Alliance military. Yo, I'm talking to you, fool. Oh. You think you funny, huh? You laugh on this net. Damn, Shepard, where were those moves when the collectors abducted your crew? Whatever, back then he went by the name Brad Hawk and made a living by beating up bad people on the streets of Green Harbor, USA. The baddest of the bad people was final boss and mayor of the city, William Borden, who was massively corrupt, if you couldn't tell from his suit and hair and whole deal. So, you're the guy I've been hearing so much about. <laughs> I've actually called you here to, shall we say, recruit your services. He's tough on crime and on flat lifeless hair. He's got my vote. Didn't you just say he was massively corrupt? But, but his hair. I'm a single issue voter. Massively corrupt or not, this mayoral sleaze bag was the sleaze bag canny enough to bring a gun to a not gun fight. You. Lousy piece of scum. I don't know where you got that from, but you're gonna hand that over now! So given the chance to unlock Bordin as a playable character, you'd do it, wouldn't you? Even if it did require achieving the elusive S rank in every stage of the game, which it did. Now imagine your rage, disappointment and confusion when upon completing the game, nailing an S rank on every level, you unlocked William Bordin minus his iconic signature weapon, i.e. a gun. Yes, this cheap boss was too cheap to pack his pistol. And not only is Borden totally gunless, but his stats are weak and his moves are more terrible than mine after six drinks at a family wedding. Oh well, I bet there weren't any better unlockable brawlers up for grabs. Whoa, what? Tekken's martial law and Paul Phoenix? Whoa, his hair's even taller. He's got my vote. Resident Evil 2 was full of great characters, from Leon Kennedy and Claire Redfield to the unimaginably creepy police chief Brian Irons, to Sherry, the little girl who wouldn't stop running off. What was that? That's what I was telling you about! It's here! Sherry, wait! Swear to God, Sherry. Resident Evil 2 famously had two different scenarios for you to play through, and if you managed to clear both with an A rank, you unlocked the special fourth survivor minigame. In this, you played as an umbrella operative called Hunk, who had to carry a sample of the zombifying G-Virus through the sewers, up into the police station, and onto the roof, where he'd be extracted by helicopter and returned to posing as a fireman for sexy calendars, or whatever it is hunks do in their spare time. Beach volleyball? Topless mirror selfies? He's got a lot going on, is what I'm saying. 
While it is difficult, the fourth survivor isn't the hardest mission in the game. That dubious honour belongs to the Tofu Survivor, which is unlocked by getting six A ranks in a row and gives you access to a new playable character, Tofu. Maybe it's just a clever nickname, like he had the G virus, but now he's been curd. Been curd. Andy, it's me, you from the future. I've come to warn you not to make that terrible bean curd joke. I just did it, oh. though. Well, in that case, boo! Anyway, it turns out that Tofu is just that, a six-foot block of soya protein with hands who has to do everything Hunk did, but armed with just a combat knife. And before you ask, yes, the zombies are still very interested in eating him. Why are zombies trying to eat a block of bean curd? Did they all turn vegetarian when we weren't looking? Not even most humans want to eat tofu. Anyway, finish tofu's scenario and you're rewarded with a picture of Hunk eating part of his head. And cool new gun, boss rush mode, another new character, bowl of miso soup with googly eyes maybe? Oh well, still a better character than Steve Burnside. Relax, beautiful. I said I was sorry. When you unlock a secret character in a fighting game, you expect them to at least look like they've seen a weight room in their entire life. So imagine your disappointment when you unlock Dr. Bosconovich in Tekken 3. He's a skinny elderly man whose primary fighting techniques involve repeatedly falling over and shuffling around on his butt. <laughs> Finally, a martial art I can master! Dr. Bosconovich is far more lethal when he's using his brain rather than his fists. In the Tekken series he's developed ballistic missiles, built a giant Russian android, and recreated his dead daughter as a robot with chainsaws for arms and an exploding head. <laughs> hey, he's an old dude. Maybe he just forgot that she didn't have either of those things. In order to unlock Dr. B, you had to complete Tekken 3's side-scrolling beat-em-up mode, Tekken Force, four separate times. Seems like a lot of effort to unlock someone who makes my granddad look like a CrossFit instructor. Still, there is another secret character. He's called Gon, and he's a dinosaur that attacks people by passing wind. <laughs> Finally, two martial arts I can master. Don't. No. Transcending history and the world, a tale of souls and swords, eternally retold. Soul Calibur 2 introduced a lot of new things to the Soul series, such as a Soul Charge system, guard breaks, arena walls, and the ability to go huh in people's faces on the Versus screen. Huh. Does that really count? Huh. My bad. Another bold innovation of Soul Calibur 2 was the introduction of unlockable characters who were bad and absolutely not worth the hassle it took to unlock them. There was Berserker, who is Rock from Soul Blade in Hideous Armor. Yeah. <laughs> And Assassin, who is Huang in a balaclava. Maybe the designers had afternoon plans that day. <laughs> Worst of all, however, is Lizard Man, who is Safitia if she were a hideous lizard. Not sure many Safitia fans were clamoring for that, to be honest. To unlock Lizard Man, you have to jump through numerous hoops, including completing all Weapon Master missions. Something which is absolutely not worth doing to be able to play as a dumb lizard with a sword whose catchphrase is. <laughs> nice comeback, idiot. Fans of the Soul games will remember that there is a character called Eon Kalkos, who also goes by the name of Lizardman and appears semi-regularly throughout the series. <laughs> However, incredibly, that Lizardman is not this Lizardman. This is just some rando Lizardman who wandered into the game while out doing Lizardman stuff. Lizardman stuff, of course, being turning up in otherwise good fighting games, being a worse version of Safitia. Yeah, real original, you dumb lizard. Perfect. Destroy. That's your lot. Those were unlockable characters that you absolutely should not have unlocked because they're a total waste of time. And if you did, we're sorry. Um, why not waste some more time of your one precious life? Can uh, I? Yes. And watch some more videos. There's this one from Outside Xbox. This is a very good one. This was line. Uh, the weirdest fighting game characters who were fired after one. That's game. the one. The weirdest fighting game characters who got fired after one game because they were so weird that they were like, nah, scrap it, not back for the sequel. And this one from Outside Extra, our sister channel, which is about cameos that were just, just too weird and must immediately be declared non-canon. 
So fill your boots, go for it.